Joining us in the kitchen today is Kasim Osgood. Three-time special teams pro bowler, played for the Chargers and the Jags. He's now a free agent. None of that is the reason we're having him on. We're having him on because he's a fun guy, and he's got some insane stories. Let's talk to Kasim. What's the worst you've ever been lit up in a special teams wedge? Um, I was uh, in my second year, we were playing the Redskins, uh, and I ran directly at three people. This is back when the wedge still had uh, three people in it. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure the average about 340 across the board. And, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to go down there and be a wedge buster. I remember Hank Bowers, you know, gassing me out before the game. So yeah, I'm going to go down there and make a big hit. I ran directly into the center guy. And uh, unbeknownst to me, the guy that was to my right has come right at my lung. I mean, he, he must have pounded my lung through, through my back. Got up, you know, I, I kind of disrupted the play a little bit, you know, and we made a tackle and got him inside the 20-yard line. So all, all, those, all those were taken care of. But uh, as I'm walking back to the sideline, I'm noticing I, I'm having trouble breathing a little bit. And all of a sudden, I just start vomiting on the sideline and there's oh. blood mixing the vomit and everything. Oh. I, I look over at my trainer and I was like, I don't think I'm going to make it. He's like, I just, you got hit, all right? Just sit down a little bit. We'll get you squared away. You'll be back out there in no time. And I was like, I, and I remember in my head thinking, like, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to last in the league if I start keep doing this. What is the worst pain, physical pain, you've ever known in football? Um, uh, I got hit by uh, Ray Lewis, and uh, he wasn't even looking at me. He was running, and then he, he caught me right on the chin, and I swore my neck just twisted right off. And uh, I, was walking back to, I was walking back to the huddle, and I looked at Drew, and I was like, hey, am I, is everything on correct? I, you know, I feel like my helmet is, like, you know, crooked or something. And he's like, no, nah, buddy, you just got hit really hard. He said, keep your head on the swivel next time. You'll be all right. And so you go back to the huddle looking for a little compassion from your quarterback. Hey, straighten me out here. Is my helmet on right? And he's not compassionate at all. No, no. Drew, Drew if anybody knows Drew Brees, he's a competitor. And he's, he told me, hey, buddy, look, you, you settle in the hole, and then you look. And then I get the ball to you. He's like, you keep drifting like that, you're going to get your ass knocked out again. So he's like, you just you gotta, <laughs> uh, next time pay attention. Pay attention to details. Thanks. Thanks, leader. Yeah, yeah Thanks. I'm, just, I'm in the huddle with my head down and uh, <laughs> just hurt. How would you describe your upbringing to a stranger? My upbringing was pretty, pretty intense. I was the youngest of four boys, so uh, whether I was on a football field or at home, I was, I was always getting uh, pummeled by somebody. So uh, I had to learn how to uh, uh, grow some thick skin really fast. Were you a troublemaker? No, not at all. I didn't have a chance to be a troublemaker. Even the times I tried to be, uh, I just had that, that view of my mom in the back of my head, or that, that glare she'd give me when they point that finger, and I knew I was in trouble. All right, well, tell me about her. I want to hear about this because it sounds like, I mean, she was, uh, she was a disciplinarian, huh? Oh, yeah, she was a drill, she was a drill sergeant. I mean, uh, she, uh, I mean, they would come home times and uh, you, your room would be GI'd. And I'm like, what, is, what does GI'd mean? And it was a general inspection. So uh, we looked around in your drawers, <laughs> looked in your closet, and realized that stuff was unorganized. So they take everything in your room and put it all in the center of the room. And then you have to go and, and reorganize your whole room again. So, I mean, down to <laughs> dusting, dusting the, the, the dressers and making your bed with the four-inch seam fold back. I mean, it was like I was in the military growing up. How frequent was that? Too many times, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> One time is enough for me. But, I mean, I, I can remember about, I can count about ten times on my hand that uh, it, it happened. How tough is mom on you now? She's still tough. I mean, it's, I mean who am I going out with? Where are you at? Uh, you make sure you get enough sleep. Are you studying your playbook? Did you, did you get a good workout today? Make sure you're not eating this junk food. I mean, she, she, she stays on me pretty tough. But uh, I mean, it's enjoyable now. I'm more like her friend, but uh, I still get the whole little harassment here and there. Did you uh, have the moment that athletes cherish so much, where you were able to give her back for her investment and uh, and the difficulties that there were in raising you as a single mother? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna her, uh, I bought her a nice car, and the first thing she said was, you can't buy me, I'm still gonna be riding you every day. <laughs> <laughs> I read a story about you that seemed crazy to me, so I don't know what you can tell me about it here, but that you ended up pistol whipped, and the woman you were with ended up shooting at somebody while you were there, and you jumped out a second floor oh, window? Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, the guy, he, he got me a couple taps on the head with his, uh, with his pistol, but, uh, I mean, uh, one of my friends was, uh, oh, she's a cheerleader for the Jaguars, and we're, we're hanging out, and her ex-boyfriend just, you know, jumped in and went crazy bananas on him, like, you know, like, oh, who's this guy cheating on you know, all the, you know, in so many words. But uh, we're just stunned. And then, I mean, she's athletic and like, like a, a tomb, like Laura Croft, Tomb Raider type girl, or Evelyn, <laughs> or Evelyn Saltz. I mean, how she jumped over the railing to, to grab her gun and 
when I hear bullets flying, like I'm not gonna stand around and wait to see who's uh, shot or who's alive and assess the damage. Like, look, I'm unarmed. <laughs> what can I do? So uh, there's a window, you know, I jump out of that window. Can, can I hit rewind on that for a second? Because that oh, yeah. sounds insane. What you just described yeah. sounds totally insane. We got a jealous boyfriend situation. He's waving a gun and the woman that you're with starts shooting at him? Yeah, I mean, uh, she had had a gun on the, on the counter, and I, when I went, first walked in the house, like, oh, what's that? I was like, oh, you know my dad. He's just, you know, I got to have it out, you know, I'm by myself here. He's, he's like, she's like, yeah, you're, uh, don't worry about that. It's okay. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a, a gun there. So, uh, I mean, when, when I seen her jump over the railing, I was like, oh, man, no, she's, she's done. Then I hear her land, and then I see the grab the gun, and I was like, oh, this is, it's something like I, I was waiting for like a, a a camera to come out like, hey, you know, you you got punked by uh, one of your teammates or somebody you know. So I thought I was on TV or something at first, and then it hit me in the reality of when I heard the gunshots go. I was like, oh man, here we go. And you were terrified, right? I mean, you were totally oh, terrified. Definitely, especially when you're unarmed. Like everybody, how, everybody else has a gun. And I don't. I'm looking for like, you know, is there an extra gun laying around? You know, is a uh, some a gun still on the package I can you know open up in case of emergency? How did you end up in that situation? How did you end up in that situation? That's what I'm still asking myself to this day. I'm like, yo, it was a nice neighborhood. It was a quiet, you know, Monday night football, watching TV, watching the game, and all of a sudden it turned to that. I'm like, that's like the last thing on the list of uh, your bucket list, your situation you want to be in. <laughs> the, the negative, the negative, yeah. buck, the negative, the negative bucket, bucket list. list. Yeah. <laughs> the bucket list with the dirt in it. <laughs> Kasim, that was fun. Thank you so much for uh, oh, yeah. being so open with us. Oh, yeah. Gracias, Kasim. De nada.